Ah, Veligion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we'll be doing our EU4 1.30 starting moves guide for Milan. Milan has received quite a lot of flavor in 1.30 with their new government type that is unique to them at the very start, namely the military dictatorship that you can get if you follow the Ambrosian Republic disaster properly. In this guide, we will be discussing the estates and economy, diplomacy and rivals, warp reparations and missions, early wars, as well as the military dictatorship and Ambrosian Republic public and your later expansion paths and ideas to be taken. Before we start the video I'd appreciate it if you left a like, commented and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on. If we can get this video to 900 likes then I'm gonna do a giveaway for an EU4 DLC or the base game if you don't have it. When discussing the estates the first thing we're gonna do is summon the diet and go for whichever agenda best suits us followed by seizure of land to get rid of the negative modifiers and get more crownlands. The privileges given to the nobility are the supremacy over the crown and monopoly on livestock, the clergy will be getting the oversight by the clergy and the burghers, free enterprise and monopoly on textiles. We're giving both of the monopolies on textiles and livestock so we can get more mercantilism as we are part of the Genoa trade node and we want to keep this as our home trade node seeing as this has the potential to become the strongest and later on in the game and it still is the strongest trade node at the very start so definitely worth being part of it. Since we're at the trade screen we're going to be changing around our merchants, we're transferring trade from Valencia and Ragusa but that is not extremely efficient and we are going to be expanding into the Venetian trade node and as such we want to start collecting trade from the Venetian trade node. We can replace our Ragusan merchant here and have the Ragusan merchant collect trade from Venice rather than transferring trade from Ragusa. The Milanese have absolutely amazing lands. They have three provinces which are farmlands and one grasslands as well as one hills and a mountain area. So playing toll and deving up as the Milanese is a great idea. In fact I actually recommend that you play tall as Milan it is a fun playthrough and with just owning the Italian peninsula you can be stronger than pretty much all of Europe together in the late game if you did decide to play tall. We will be expanding shortly and after we do expand we're going to be getting more of the trade power in the Genoa and the Venetian trade node. When discussing your rivals it doesn't really matter who rivaled you what matters is who you rival and that's going to be Switzerland, Venice and Mantua for us as we're going to be attacking Mantua at the very start together with the Venetians to get back our two course here in uh, Bergamo and Brescia as well as get some more provinces if possible especially Verona and Padua. Alliance wise it is quite RNG and the best alliance you could hope for is the Austrians but a lot of the times they're not going to be willing to ally you. You could improve relations and eventually this will help you and you will be able to get an alliance with them but for your early on allies you want to get allies that prevent you from getting a coalition around your starting area. So what I mean by that is ally nations around you especially nations that are a bit larger such as Savoy if available but a lot of the times the Savoyans do rival you and you do want to take over most of the Savoyan lands so if you do ally them make sure it's literally temporary as you will attack them after you've taken your parts back in uh, the Venetian trade note and into the south. Another great alliance in my opinion is the three leagues as the three leagues a lot of the times is willing to attack the Swiss together with you as well as they border you and they would be getting a lot of aggressive expansion once you eat up your neighbor if you're not allied to them. Remember that all alliances we get at the very start are going to be temporary. Our main alliance goals are going to be Austria together with Castile or France if possible. In a best case scenario you'd want to get all three of them as an ally if they didn't rival each other which most of the times they do rival each other. When it comes to your advisors I recommend going for whichever you feel is perfect for you because there's no special advisors that the Milanese start off with. For Diplo I recommend either a Diplo reputation or a trade efficiency guy for your admin either production or tax efficiency and for your military I recommend discipline or morale but if you don't get any of those fort defense or land force limit modifier is good as well. The Milanese also have a special event that triggers once Duke Filippo Maria the first Visconti dies. If he dies without having an heir you're gonna get an event or better yet a disaster that's gonna make your nation a republic and a special kind of republic namely an Ambrosian republic that gives plus 10 national tax modifier fire and plus 5 morale of armies as well as some governing capacity. Another way to trigger the event is if your legitimacy is below 75. So in order to get ready for our wars here we're going to be recruiting the free company and we're going to set them up in Novara here. This is going to give you over the uh, force limit by 1 if you don't have a land force limit modifier guy so keep that in mind but you don't need to worry your economy should be fine at the start of the game. I also recommend making your king a general if you're especially interested in getting the republic 
public, making him a general means that he's gonna die off faster and thus triggering the event faster as well. When it comes to your mission tree, you can get claims on pretty much all of Italy if you do follow your mission tree. If you somehow manage to get the province of Genova from Genoa, then you're gonna get claims on all of the Emilia Romagna and Ligurian area, which is basically these areas here. After you've conquered all of Emilia Romagna, you get claims on Tuscany and so on down the road. After you get your first two cores back from uh, the Venetians, you're gonna get claims on the rest of Venice in Italy at least, except the island of Venice. And then conquering that gives you more claims on the actual island of Venice, Mantua and so on. But by this point, you should already have Mantua as part of your nation. You also have a really cool mission here that by winning a war in which you've had mercenaries from Switzerland in your army, then you get discipline and the cost for mercenaries minus 10 and 5 respectively. And this is something you can do at any point. It doesn't have to be at the very start. If you have three massive allies that have bigger armies than you and etc., you get improved relations and so on. And the right hand side of the mission tree focuses on developing your nation and having a tall Milan. So even your mission tree is telling you that you should be playing a tall Milan. For example, if you get 150 dev in the Lombardy area here altogether, you can get silk in Como, which means that the province of Como is going to be producing silk rather than cloth after you get the event. You can also get one development and all of your Lombard provinces that do not have any separatism from enacting the wealth of Italy and all roads lead to Milan give until the end of the game national tax plus 10 trade value 10 and institution spread plus 15 percent this is a really great one to have but it is a bit harder to attain as you will pretty much have to be Italy by that point if you follow the left side of the mission tree you're gonna get claims on all of Italy and even bonuses from owning some of these parts such as prestige as well as various points and other bonuses my recommendation is when you do play as Milan follow the mission tree as it definitely shows you exactly what your expansion path should look like. If you're lucky enough and the Swiss do not have any allies, I recommend attacking them. A lot of the times they do get the three leagues as an ally or sometimes even another minor nation in the south of Germany. If that is the case, it's not a big deal. They're still easy to take on. So just push on over for your humiliation CB. Whilst you're doing this, make sure that you get your claim on Mantua and ensure that you put the protect trade edict in both of your provinces so you can get some more money from trade income. You should also get a general in case your king doesn't have any siege pit. Perhaps you're lucky with a general if you're not then still get a general sieging down burn might take a while since it is a hill fort but if you have a siege pip for your general it's going to lower the amount of time it takes considerably remember that even if the swiss allied the three leagues it's not a massive issue you can take both on quite easily but if you do ally the three leagues yourself before they do then they will definitely not ally them as you are rivaled after you've taken burn take out their army as well it is not necessary to take out the army however it does give you some army tradition which is why i recommend doing it after you win the war you're gonna have the chance of either going for show of strength or you can go for humiliate which is a great option since you want to get this towards getting your first age bonus and you can even get money from them as well as trade power peace out the swiss and next we're gonna focus on the mantuans by now you should have your claim on mantua and we're gonna keep our diplomat in mantua as we're gonna need him there to improve our siege ability after you finish your humiliation war against Switzerland you should have more alliance options especially France is more willing to ally you and do take advantage of that alliance as you want to have a strong French ally next to you in December 1446 your truce with the Venetians is going to expire and you want to make the attack on Venice a priority it is up to you if you attack Mantua or Venice first if the Venetians do not have any massive allies and they only have Epirus and the Knights that is going to be a very easy war and I recommend attacking them instead of Mantua first but if they have super big allies then attack Mantua first and leave Venice for later in my game I was lucky enough to have Venice only ally the Epirus and the Knights and as such I'm going to declare war on Venice to take back my cores and I'll set Bergamo as the war goal as it is the first one I'm going to be reconquering. Also make sure you call in Trent, ally Trent, they're always willing to ally anybody and I promise them land this way they're going to join. Literally do not give them anything and just abandon them after the war. Just call them in as the Venetians will definitely prioritize sieging down Trent thus losing their troops wasting their time on that one province rather than attacking you. So declare war on the Venetians and we're going to be attacking taking over Bergamo 
tunnel first. As you can see, Trent is going to be the province they're going to be wasting their time with sieging down, whilst we actually attack the Venetian lands. If they do somehow manage to get to Milano, a lot of the times Ferrara gives them military access if they're not rivaled, then make sure to change your edict to the defensive edict so that you get extra defensiveness, thus making it longer for them to take the province whilst you are taking over their provinces. After you've taken Brescia, if they're still attacking your main capital here, attack them as you will have the defender advantage and you can sally out troops from the capital also. You will not be able to take over Venice itself as they have a fleet and you don't have a fleet and as such you cannot cross on over to Venice. But just taking the forts here and if needed the fort in Dalmatia is going to be enough to win the war. Venice might also get attacked by other nations whilst you're at war with them so do make sure that you take the provinces that you're interested in before other nations take them. I also recommend while you're doing all of these wars against the Venetians that you improve relations with the papal states. I also recommend and if needed get a loan and spend some money on buying indulgence from the Pope this is going to improve your relations with them by 75 and will also improve your chances of becoming the Korea controller once you have pretty much all of the northern parts of uh, the Venetian lands you should be able to piece them out ensure that you have the fort in Treviso and uh, the fort in Brescia as these two are pretty much mandatory to piece out the Venetians you want to go for the four provinces in the north here, your two cores of Bergamo and Brescia as well as Verona and Padova. If you don't have enough war score, you can either sit on it or you can go and siege down the uh, provinces they have in the Adriatic coastline. If you do manage to take over the Dalmatian parts, then you're going to be able to take all of four of the provinces for 38 aggressive expansion as they are not part of the HRE. And you're also going to be able to get some cash to pay off your loans that you probably will have gotten throughout the war. After you get the provinces of Bergamo and Brescia, you'll get the cores on Ravenna, Treviso and Friuli. So for your next war, you can take over all of the remaining provinces the Venetians have on the mainland and not on the Venetian island in Italy. Core up the extra true provinces you took and pay off your loans as well also make sure you make a full core out of the Po Valley and now our army also can get a lot bigger and make sure that you do get these 2,000 extra troops as you're gonna need them in your war against the Mantuans and the Genoans you also should be able to change your rivals by now as Mantua is too small to be a, an actual rival for you make sure you set Genoa as your rival or even Ferrara is a good option if you haven't already try and get an alliance with the Hungarians they might get inherited by the Austrians but if they don't they are definitely going to be a great ally for you to keep. Also cancel any military access that you got through the war. Eventually your ruler will die and if you fall in a regency or you have below 75 legitimacy the Ambrosian Republic disaster will trigger extremely fast. I mean four months fast. When it happens you will be changing over to a republic and you're going to be able to choose between three new rulers each of which will have four points in one of the three available mana choices. I recommend going for whichever you need the most that would probably be the admin though. Make sure to also increase your stability after the disaster happened. Make sure that you're strong enough as some nations will get a Cassus belly against you and will try to bring you back to becoming a monarchy or even install a PU over you. Remember to give the monopoly on paper to get one more mercantilism after you take the four provinces and you have paper available and by now you should have another claim on the province of Genova. So we're going to be attacking Mantua here and we're going to be co-belligerating Genoa. In my case they're allied to Florence so it's not a massive issue but if they're allied to a bigger nation than Florence do not co belligerate them. Do remember to keep your troops close to each other and take one step at a time. Do not rush in for Genoa. Let them attack you and you fight them on your own terms. You are also going to get the event for a proposition for Sforza. This is going to give you a general Francesco Sforza and he's quite great actually. Francesco Sforza is actually going to become our leader very shortly once we get another event trigger. He does have two siege pips so you can put him in charge of your siege of Mantua. With Sforza in charge we should be able to finish off Mantua before the Genoans even get a chance to. Around this time you should also get the Milanese succession which gives a PUCB against you for France and Austria. If you're allied to the French they cannot attack you. If you're not allied to the Austrians they can attack you. Usually they don't but it is not guaranteed that they will not. Attack and destroy the Genoese forces. You should have more morale than them as well as more troops. Make sure you focus on sieging down Genoa 
after you've taken Mantua. If you get the event stack of Genoa, which is not guaranteed, go for the army professionalism. Don't worry about it. You want that army professionalism. And then go into Albenga, siege that down as well before you do engage the enemy army. After you make Sforza your general, he is actually going to rebel and you can get your country to become a military dictatorship if you have the Emperor DLC. This is particular to the 1.30 update and I recommend you go for the military dictatorship as it definitely boosts up your nation. It's a republic on steroids basically. You get plus 10 morale of armies and autonomy change minus 0 0.075 which is a lot. Peace out whoever is not a co-belligerent and take all their money as well as make them transfer trade power and give you war reparations and if you can make them cancel their rival as that is going to give you a lot of prestige that we desperately need right now. You most likely will not be able to take over Genova even if you have the claim as it is going to be a massive coalition that will trigger afterwards. I do recommend that you take over the Genoan lands after the Shadow Kingdom has triggered and Genoa has left the HRE together with everybody else in North Italy. Do make sure you take all the money and make sure you humiliate them, get war reparations as well and cancel whatever treaties you can cancel. Peace them out. Now you might be wondering why did you even co-belligerate them? Well, I did co-belligerate them so I can bring in Florence and then get the trade power from both of these nations, thus boosting up my own trade power to 27%, which is a massive amount in the early game. You should have the money to embrace the Renaissance by now from taking it over from Florence and Genoa. And when it comes to Mantua, if you fully annex them, it's going to be a small coalition that will trigger. Instead, you should make them a vassal. Thus, you get zero coalitions and it means that you still can attack Ferrara, Bologna and so on within the next few years. Make sure you take all their money as well and cancel whatever rivals you can to get the prestige and booyah 1454 we have a firm grasp on the north of italy and we have the best government type we can imagine also around this time you should get the choice of either becoming back a monarchy and making sforza your first king continuing with the military dictatorship and appointing another random guy as the new military dictator this will stabilize the government in milan so you will not get this choice again or you can switch on over back to the ambrosian Republic. I don't recommend going back to becoming a monarchy as both the military dictatorship and the Ambrosian Republic are super good government types. So choose between either military dictatorship or Ambrosian Republic. The dictatorship gives you more morale of armies and autonomy change per month and the Ambrosian Republic gives you national tax as well as some morale of armies and governing capacity. Keeping the military dictatorship also means that you can fight off bigger nations due to your increased morale of armies. So I would say keeping the dictatorship is not a bad idea. After you make your choice and you killed off the rebels, you're gonna get 1 stability and 20 prestige, as well as get rid of the disaster which was giving you plus 5 unrest. After stabilizing the north part of Italy, you should continue to expand into the Venetian lands after your truce is finished with them and take on over Ravenna, Treviso and Friuli in the next war. Once the north Italian nations leave the HRE, that's when you should start expanding first into Genoa, followed up by the rest of the southern parts of Italy and central parts of Italy. Also remember to drop whatever allies are not important anymore. In order to form the Italian nation, we're gonna need Genoa, Firenze and Rome, so it's gonna be quite easy. Gen Genoa will be quite after the nations leave the HRE taking over Genoa and Firenze is going to be a cakewalk. You should also get Ferrara as your vassal after your AE goes down a bit as after you've taken Mantua as a vassal you're going to have pretty high AE. If you are allied to Savoy keep them until you finish off a few more conquests in this area and everybody leaves the HRE afterwards drop them and start eating them up as well. And as I previously mentioned just follow your mission tree that is the best option for expanding. The fact that you now have the military dictatorship as your government type also means that you will definitely be able to fight off bigger nations due to your army strength. The ideas I would go for as Milan are economic and quantity first so that you can get the awesome 20% dev cost reduction and another minus 10% dev cost reduction from the policy that you get from these two as well as economic is going to boost your economy considerably and quantity is going to increase the amount of troops that you have and Milan doesn't have as many troops as their neighbors getting quantity will help quite a lot. As a third idea Idea, I'd recommend going for trade ideas as you are in the best trade situation right now. You will eventually have both the Genoa and the Venice trade nodes and having two end trade nodes is basically the recipe for success. As a fourth idea and as a second military idea, I would definitely go for plutocratic seeing as it gives you everything that you want. You get morale of armies, national unrest, extra merchants, goods produce modifier, manpower recovery speed, as well as the policy that you mix in with economic 
gives you plus 10% more national tax and plus 0.2 Republican traditions. Plutocratic is one of the best ideas to go for as a republic to be fair. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe for more videos like these in the future as well as leave the bell button on. And I also want to thank my patrons. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, then check the link in the description. And until the next one, have a great day.